Grab yourself a coffee and pull up a seat because today I'm teaching you how to play as the crafter in Mythwind. I'm Mark Maya and this is Board Game Coffee. Thank you. All right. In this video, we're gonna learn how to play as the crafter in Mythwind. If you're interested in learning about other characters, check out the other how-to videos that I've linked in the description. There's a video for each character. And if you're looking for the core rules, we've got a link to that too. Not to mention a complete index for all the information in this video. All right, let's learn how to make some stuff with the crafter. The crafter aims to enhance the emerging town with their artisanship. They build their reputation by crafting goods for the townsfolk, ensuring both quality and speed of production evolve with the town's growth. Before we learn how to play as the crafter, let's get to know her a little bit. The crafter collects materials, refining them for sale and activating additional actions. She can also use those materials to craft requested items to earn some serious cash. Each item you craft works toward increasing your reputation, allowing the crafter to demand higher prices for their goods. The setup instructions that we'll be covering in this video will focus on what you need to do to set up the crafter for your very first game. For every subsequent game that you play with the crafter, you'll need to follow the continue the game section laid out in the back of the crafter's journal. That said, Let's learn how to set up the crafter. The first thing we're gonna do is collect these three crafter boards and crafter header and position them on your character tray like so. Next thing we're gonna do is insert these double-sided reputation dials underneath this reputation board so that the five value coin, the one with this arrow pointing to it, is positioned like this. Do this for each reputation slot. Then top it off with the reputation board. This will allow you to see your current reputation and the value of the depicted item through these little windows. Then grab the crafter miniature along with 10 coins and your 10 crafter skill tokens and place them next to your tray, making sure that the skill tokens are face down like this so that their levels are visible. Next, separate each of the crafter's materials into separate piles to create the supply. Now, draw two random materials from the supply and place them in refinement slot one of the workshop. Then insert one of each of the five material types into the draw bag. Divide the request cards into five groups based on the sprite number found on the back. Now, take all the cards that don't have a sprite icon on the back and shuffle them together to form the request deck. The other stacks can be set aside for now we won't be using them during this first season. Lastly, take the top card of the request deck and display it face up near the crafter tray. All right, now that we're all set up, let's go over a few basic character concepts that separates the crafter from the other characters. The crafter utilizes five types of materials to produce goods. Canvas, leather, cedar, birch, and paper. These materials, represented by tokens, can be refined in the workshop to sell, trigger actions, or used in crafting goods to satisfy customer requests. Ah, the workshop. This is the crafter's hub for refining materials and crafting goods. It features five refinement slots, an inventory slot for unrefined materials, and two additional worker slots for even more options during the worker placement action. There's no limit to the number of materials that can be held in your inventory slot, but refinement slots can only hold a maximum of four materials. A material's refinement level is equal to the refinement slot it occupies, and it plays a large part in crafting items, as each item you craft will require materials of a specific refinement level. The reputation track highlights the crafter's experience in making fine goods. Backpacks, boots, scrolls, hammers, and curios. 
As the crafter meets more town requests for a specific good, their reputation and price for that good increases, allowing them to earn more money as the game continues. We'll cover how you craft items and improve your reputation later in the video. As we mentioned in the video for the core rules, each day in Mythwind is separated into three phases, dawn, daytime, and dusk. Many of the rules for those phases have been explained in the core rules video and consist of steps that are shared between all characters. So I won't be going over those steps in this video. In this video, I'll be focusing on what the crafter character does differently during each of those steps. So let's start from the top, the dawn phase. The dawn phase for the crafter doesn't add any additional steps, so just follow the steps laid out in the core rules video, which consist of determining the weather, checking season effects, and resolving weather effects. Once you've done that, you're ready for the daytime phase. The start of the daytime phase begins with the crafter performing a town action as described in the core rules video. Once that's done, they'll move on to performing their specific character action. In the case of the crafter, this involves restocking or selling materials, followed by resolving a skill. Once that's done, they'll move on to gathering materials and refining materials. Okay, so since the first thing the crafter does is restock or sell, let's go over that. When it comes time to restock or sell, the crafter will choose to either restock or sell one of the five materials listed on their tray. Birch, paper, canvas, leather, or cedar. As we covered in the alignment section of the core rules video, the materials available to the crafter will be dependent on their alignment. If the crafter is aligned with sprites, they'll be able to restock or sell any one of these three materials. If the crafter is aligned with villagers, they'll be able to restock or sell any one of these three materials. Note that the material in the middle can be used regardless of the crafter's alignment. And in case I haven't said it already, you're only restocking or selling one of these materials. That said, let's learn how to restock and sell your selected material. If you decide to restock, take one copy of the material you selected from the supply and place it into your bag. If you decide to sell rather than restock, remove one token of the selected material from a refinement slot in your workshop and add it to your draw bag. Then gain coins from the general supply equal to the value shown on that refinement slot. In addition, you'll also be able to execute the action associated with that refinement slot. I'll go over what each of these actions do later in the video. Once you're done restocking or selling, move on to the resolve skill portion of your character action. In the core rules video, we touched a bit on how we buy skills for our character, and we'll go over that in more detail later in the video. But for now, here's a brief introduction on how to resolve a skill. Let's say as the crafter, I chose to restock paper. Once I've completed that restock action, I would resolve any skill that I've slotted in the space adjacent to that action. So in this example, after I restock, I would resolve this skill here that allows me to pay one coin to increase the value of one of my hired workers by one. Now, if the skill slot were empty, then I wouldn't have any skills to resolve. Once you've performed your crafter action and resolved your skill, if any, we move on to the next portion of the crafter's daytime routine, which is gather materials. When it comes time to gather materials, all you gotta do is reach into your bag and pull out three random material tokens. If you didn't have three tokens in your bag, just pull out as many as you can. Then place those tokens in the inventory slot of your workshop. Once you're done gathering materials, it's time to refine the materials you got. When you refine, you have two available actions. You can begin and you can advance. Both these options can be performed as many times as you want in any order you want on as many materials as needed, assuming you have the necessary materials to do so. 
but it's important to resolve the refinement of one material completely before moving on to the next. With that said, let's take a look at the begin action. When you begin the refinement of a material, select any one material of your choice from the workshop's inventory and move it to refinement slot number one. And remember, this action can be repeated, but keep in mind that each refinement slot can only hold up to four materials. Advancing a material involves taking it from one refinement slot and moving it to the next refinement slot in numerical order. To advance a material in a refinement slot, simply take an item of the same type from the inventory and return it to the bag. Then advance the matching material in the refinement slot one step. And as long as you have the necessary materials to do so, you can perform this step as many times as you want, and you can use it on different material types. All right, now that the materials in our workshop are refined to meet our needs, let's learn all about the worker actions. All right, in the core video, we learned how to hire workers. Now we're gonna learn how to use them. You'll notice that next to each of your crafter's materials, there's a slot that will hold a single worker. During the perform worker action, you can take a worker from your dice well, tick it down one step, and slot it into a material slot of the matching color. This means that your sprites can be slotted into any of these three spots, and your villagers can be slotted into any of these three spots. This will allow you to restock or sell the materials associated with the slot that you placed your worker in. So by placing my sprite worker here, I would be able to restock or sell a single paper material following the same rules we described earlier in the video. Although I won't be able to resolve the skill token associated with that material. In addition to the slots here, the crafter character also has two slots in their workshop, one for sprites and one for villagers. When slotting the worker into one of these spaces, trigger the action associated with it. What those actions do, we'll be covering later in the video. And the best part is, as long as I still have workers in my dice well, I can keep using them to restock, sell, or use these workshop actions. But I want to clarify, you can only use one worker per slot. You can't just pile them onto the same space. The dust phase for the crafter adds one additional step. So after you've returned your character and your workers, as we learned in the core rules video, the crafter will fulfill requests. At this point, the crafter can fulfill one of the requested items that they have face up by their tray. The materials used to craft the item must meet or exceed the refinement levels indicated on the request card. So if I wanna make this backpack, I'll need two canvases at refinement level two and one birch at refinement level one. Remove the depicted materials from your workshop and place them into the supply, not your draw bag. And keep in mind, when spending materials to craft an item, the level depicted on the item card is the minimum requirement. So technically, I could have spent level 5 canvases and a level 4 birch. It would have been overkill, but it would have worked. Once you fulfill a request, gain the amount of coins listed at the bottom and take the action associated with it. A star coin represents your premium for that particular item. Premiums are these values shown here on your reputation track. So in this example, the premium for this backpack would be five coins. This means I would earn two coins plus five coins. As you improve your reputation for creating a certain type of item, you also increase the premium for that item. Once you have your money collected, perform the action indicated here. What these actions do will be indicated in your crafter's journal, but I'll also be covering them later in this video. Once you've fulfilled the request, collected your coins, and performed the indicated action, save the card near your player tray. You'll need it to improve your reputation, which we'll be covering shortly. But first, let's learn what happens at the end of a season. In our Mythwind How to Play video for the core rules, we learned all about the steps we need to take when reaching the end of a season. Some characters, like the crafter, have a character upkeep step in addition to their regular end of season procedures. 
So after you've resolved your end of season actions, your goal cards, reset the weather deck, and changed your season tile, all of which we cover in the core rules video, we move on to the resolve character upkeep. And if you're playing with the crafter, this is what you do. First thing you need to do is gather up all the unfulfilled request cards next to your character tray, along with all the request cards remaining in the request card deck. Then sort them back into their proper numbered piles. Although at the moment, the only request cards we have are these ones with no numbers on the back. So sorting them is really easy. Next, count all the sprite dice currently in play, whether they're on the town board or on any tray belonging to an active player. Once you're done counting, grab all the request decks that depict a number equal to or less than the number of sprite dice that we just counted. And since we just counted five sprite dice, I would take these three decks and shuffle them together to form our new request deck. These other two decks will remain out of the game, because both of them are showing a value greater than five. Lastly, count the total number of villager dice on the town board and on any active player trays. Then draw that many cards from the top of the request deck and place them face up next to your character tray. So since we see three villagers in total, we'll place three request cards face up near our tray. All right, we've seen these action icons on our workshop and we've also seen them show up on our crafting cards, but what do they mean? Let's dive in. When you trigger this action, simply draw a card off the top of the request deck and place it face up next to your character tray. Now you have an extra request that you can fulfill. The refine action allows you to advance any one material in your workshop by one, without having to pay the additional refinement cost of removing an item from your inventory. Speaking of inventory, the refinement action can also be used to move a single material from your inventory into refinement slot number one. And don't forget, you can only ever have four materials in any one refinement slot. The gather action allows you to take one random token from your bag and place it in your inventory. And take note, the gather action is not the same as the gather materials step. Because during the gather materials step, you take three tokens from the bag. But when you're performing the gather action, you only take one. The cell action works just like the cell action we learned about earlier. Remove a refined material from your workshop, earn the money listed on that space, and take the action associated with that space. To increase the reputation for a specific good, the crafter discards their fulfilled request cards. The number of cards discarded should match the current reputation level for that good. For instance, if the crafter has a reputation level of 2 for curios, they must discard 2 fulfilled curio request cards to progress to level 3. All discarded cards are shuffled back into the request deck. When elevating a good's reputation, adjust the dial under the reputation track by turning it one step counterclockwise. Note that the dial is double-sided. Once one side reaches its maximum reputation level of 3, flip it over to continue tracking. As highlighted in the Core Rules video, characters earn skills via the Longhouse or certain game effects with this skill icon. To acquire a skill, the crafter must pay its cost with the materials of the indicated refinement level, the same way you do when fulfilling a request card. So to pay for this skill, I would return the following materials back to the supply. One canvas at level 3, one cedar at level 2, and one birch at level 1. Skills have three levels. To access level 2 and 3, one of the depicted sprites must be in play. These sprites will be unlocked by certain event cards. Upon paying for a skill, flip it over to reveal its ability side and place it into one of the slots on your character tray. When you earn a new skill token, you're free to rearrange any of the skill tokens on your character tray. But that's the only time you can rearrange your skill tokens, so place wisely. If you're looking for a breakdown of what each of the crafter's skill tokens do, there's a skill index in the back of the crafter's journal. When you reach 
past the end of a season, you have a few options. Do you start a new season continuing with your current character? Do you put your current character away and start up a new one? Or do you put the entire game away and come back to play another day? Well, whatever your decision, you'll find instructions on how to save your character's progress or how to continue with a new character in the back of that character's personal journal. And you can find instructions for saving and continuing your progress on the main board, either in our Mythwind How to Play video or in the back of the town charter. And that's it. I hope this video helps and I hope you enjoy playing Mythwind. See you next week. Thanks for joining us. If you like this video and you want to see more, subscribe to our channel. It's the best way to keep up to date with everything we do here at Board Game Coffee. But if you want to see more right now, we got plenty of videos to choose from. And if that's not enough, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Mark Maya, and this is Board Game Coffee. And remember, have fun, keep gaming, be social. See you next week.